Houston's original neighborhood downtown is for everyone. And right now is the perfect time to check out their Market Square Park Farmer's Market. Every Saturday until November 16th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Farmer's Market is putting a spotlight on local growers and makers who are providing access to seasonally fresh and affordable fruits and vegetables, plus meat proteins and prepared foods, as well as other household goods. There's also live music from local artists and other entertainment, and it's free. You can learn more at downtownhouston.org. Downtown Houston, get energized and revived. Find your fall vibes in Pearland with a full calendar of autumn events. Hike through history from Valentin's Brewing Company to the Old Settler Cemetery on October 25th. And on October 26th, you can kickstart your holiday shopping at the Pearland Boutique Shop and Hop. And enjoy curated menus for a cause the entire month of November for Pearland Restaurant Weeks. Discover Pearland this season, where charm and hospitality meet unforgettable experiences. Get all the details on these events and more at visitpearland.com slash to do. Today on City Cats Houston. Inflation has been a big talking point this election cycle, and while Houston still ranks as one of the more affordable big cities in the country, sometimes it doesn't feel like that to people who actually live here. So today, let's save some money on things like groceries, insurance, and more. Hey, Houston newsletter writer Brooke Lewis and executive producer Laura Isensey, join me to share our best tips to save money in H-Town. It's Thursday, October 24th. I'm Raheel Ramzanli, and here's what Houston's talking about. Hey, y'all. Good morning, Brooke. What's up? How are you? Doing well. How are you doing, Raheel? I'm doing all right. Laura, good morning. How's everything going? Good morning. It's pretty good, but it definitely is one of those days where I like, I need that extra cup of coffee. (laughs) So (laughs) I got that with me here. Oh, absolutely. That that seems to be my kind of morning a lot now. (laughs) Like I just want more (laughs) coffee and I just need it now. Hey, this is going to be one of my favorite episodes because around my friends and family, I am known to be very cheap. All right. (laughs) And they make fun of me. Like I will go look for a bargain. I will hunt down coupons. I will do anything I can to save money. So this is my type of episode. Not a lot of advice, but what is your relationship to spending and saving, Laura? I would say for me, I'm a little bit of mix of both. I like to spend when it's a splurge, like a really nice dinner at a nice restaurant or a trip. Um, But then like day to day. I do like to save money. I like to stay on budget. I like to save up for those splurges. So I'm definitely kind of a little bit of both. Okay. That's good to hear. Brooke, how about you? Yeah, I would say I'm in the middle like Laura, where I love taking a nice trip, having a nice dinner, eating out. But in the day to day expenses, I'd much rather save. But I do find myself I feel like spending more these days. I don't know if it's just because things are more expensive, but I just am like, where's the money going? Like, where is it going? (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, I definitely feel that now. And yeah, like things are getting more expensive. So we're going to talk about saving money. Mm -hmm. Let's start with insurance and just insurance in general, because it's expensive. Okay. And you have to shop around. Let's start with this one. Yeah, I really need help on the car insurance front, you guys. So any tips are welcome because I earlier this year was in two accidents in one week, which sounds pretty crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And were they your fault? They were both my fault. But guys, I promise there's nothing we can do to help you. on this. (laughs) I promise, guys, that I'm an excellent driver. But, you know, my auto insurance doesn't quite believe that right now. So my rate went up. Um, And my rate went up naturally because of just insurance rates going up, but then also went up because I was in two accidents. Um, But looking at that, I still have kind of evaluated whether I should change car insurances or not because things are just getting expensive. And my insurance rate is bundled with my renter's insurance. It has saved me money in the past, but right now it's not saving me money. So I'll give you the best advice that I've ever gotten about car insurance. 
When it's time for renewal, shop around. Obviously, that's the easiest one, right? It takes time. It is frustrating to like fill out that form or give the information over and over again. But number two is jump on a call with somebody from the insurance company and go over your coverage plans because your car does depreciate in value. So you might not need as much coverage as before, or you might need to adjust a few things. Maybe you don't need X, Y, and Z on this coverage plan. So really go through and talk to somebody who is qualified about your car insurance plans. Mm -hmm. With homeowner's insurance, I can speak on this one, and this kind of goes with rental insurance as well. Use a broker. These brokers are fantastic. There's a lot of companies out there that will shop around what you're looking for and find you a great deal. And it usually doesn't cost you anything because the insurance company will pay the brokerage their fee. So I've used this company for almost eight years now. It's called TGS Insurance. And every year when it's time for renewal, I call my agent up and if he's not there, somebody else will help me out. And they will shop it around to so many companies and they'll say, look, this is my professional opinion. You should go with X, Y, and Z. You might save a little bit here or you might pay just a little bit more or whatever it is. They give you good advice and just helps you make a good sound decision. Yeah. And I I want to go back to your, your pain with car insurance <laughs> because I have totally been there. This was maybe like eight years ago or, or more where I, yeah, I had a couple fender benders. Not all of them were my fault, but it was really concentrated in like one year. And I was like, what, do I have a target on me <laughs> driving down the yeah. freeway? <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> and I'm, it did take a while. I mean, I think it took like five years for those to get off my record, yep. my driving record. But, you know, there's other things you can do to try and lower that car insurance. Like Raheel was saying, like you can go through your policy and, you know, maybe you have a higher deductible so you can have a lower premium. Um, also, sometimes if you take a driving course, um, they will knock it down a little bit. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. that. That is interesting. Yeah. And you can do these driving courses online. Um, and so th sometimes that can kind of take the edge off. Um, another one is like if you can find general ways to improve your credit score, that can help lower your car insurance as well as your home insurance. So just that's another big thing in the whole insurance market is, you know, having a good credit score can go a long way in saving money, you know, which kind of makes it feel like all a big racket, but that's maybe a conversation for another <laughs> so day. Frustrating. No, I appreciate that, Laura. I do feel like once you have one accident in Houston, it like opens up this weird vortex where you're, you do have a target. It's like, you're going to have another one in the next like six weeks or something so that your oh. insurance rate will go up. Well, Brooke, <laughs> drive safely out there. Let's hope for no more accidents, yes. please, especially if they're your fault, because at that point it's tough. Okay. Yes. <laughs> There's really not much we can do. Okay. So I, I want to share one thing that's been really a struggle for me uh, is that, you know, groceries. Every week I do our grocery order. I try to be, you know, budget conscious and it just, I, I have a hard time keeping it in, you know, in the budget. There's this journalist friend I have that she has three boys and she's always posting on social media of like, look at my coupon savings this week. And it'll be like, Fifty dollars, eighty-eight dollars wow. in coupon savings, wow. That's and amazing. I'm like, how does she do this? I don't know how to get into the coupon game, partly because of the time. Like, I barely have enough time to do yes. the grocery order and get to curbside. Like, I gotta <laughs> ask y'all for some help on the on the grocery side. I got you because this is a big pain point for us as well with kids. You're like, okay, we need to save money on groceries. So I recently found this Instagram account called TX Frugal Finds, Texas Frugal Finds. And this lady is fantastic. Like she will do a roundup of the best deals going on at Kroger, at HEB, at Sam's Club, whatever it may be. And I've gotten into the couponing game. Like I'm all in now. So before we even go grocery shopping, that's number one. Before you go, you have to spend time get on the HEB app, the Kroger app, and just see what coupons are out there and kind of plan ahead, clip those coupons digitally and have those ready. But the one thing I found is look for those $5, $10 off your entire basket purchases 
because those will save you so much money and you have to buy stuff with the future in mind. So for example, I know exactly which deodorant I'm going to buy and use for my entire year, right? And if they have a deal, I'm going to buy those ahead of time. And instead of paying $8 for them, I'm paying $3 for them. <laughs> okay. So Rahil, I want to know how many sticks of deodorant do you have <laughs> in your bathroom right now? Right now, I have three spray cans ready to go. So I don't think I'm running out. Oh, only three? <laughs> Yeah. Only three? I thought you were going to say like 30 or something. No, no, no. <laughs> a whole stockpile. Yeah, I'm not a hoarder slash like end of world prepper. But no, you just have to buy stuff with the future in mind, right? And then yeah. for weekly produce and fruits, you got to look at the coupons and buy accordingly because there's always sales. I just imagine Raheel leaving H-E-B or wherever he is with a big <laughs> card of deodorant. <laughs> just like, yes, I saved. I saved. I do, I, I'm so proud of my savings. And the other savings tip for all my men out here listening, don't let your significant other just go to the grocery store by herself. Okay. I'm just going to throw that out there. My wife is the worst at when it comes to this. Like, um, hey, can you just go pick up some milk? And all of a sudden, She's coming back with $150 worth of stuff. I'm like, what just happened here? So that's my other savings tip that a lot of people might not like. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like a Target run as opposed to a grocery run where you just go in for one thing. When I'm in the grocery store, I'm on a mission. I will say I break the stereotype because I'm just in and out. Like I'm just kind of like, I have my items. I want to get in and out. Um, but I guess I have more tips for people the single people listening, because I do have it way easier on groceries because I'm cooking for one person. So I really do try to stick to a grocery budget in mind. And I also try to think about, okay, I'm not eating out during the week. Some people do like to eat out during the week, especially if you're a single person and you have time. But I really designate my eating out days to Friday and Saturdays. And so for the rest of the week, I'm just cooking um, for me and making bigger meals so that I can um, save money. So that's, I would just nice. have a plan in mind and mm -hmm. not be like the way Raheel described, just going into the grocery <laughs> store mindless. That's a good one. Meal prepping is so essential. Yes. And just yeah. knowing what you're going to eat, you're not making big decisions. You just know like, okay, this is my lunch. I've prepped it for the week. That helps a lot. But with kids, it is harder. They don't want to eat the same thing every <laughs> single day. So yes. it is a little bit harder. But for adults, I do that. I just meal prep for the whole week and I know exactly what I'm going to eat. I buy enough for the week. So it's great. Yeah. And Brooke, I totally hear you on kind of saving the eating out for, you know, the weekend, special occasions. And just this week, one of my parent group chats was blowing up with eating out hacks, specifically all these restaurants that have deals of kids eating free. Uh, so you can find really great deals like Dish Society, Kids Eat Free on Tuesdays, Mendocino Farms, they have Kids Eat Free on Thursdays. Other places can have really great um, you know, family style meals, whether you're going as a family or a group of friends, um, like Fiji's Barbecue, apparently that was in the group chat. So another kind of eating out hack that I've done before is maybe get kind of a special entree from a restaurant. Um, so like, I really love the gluten-free fried chicken at Max's Wine Dive. <laughs> um, and then I'll get it to go and then like make the sides at home. So it's sort of like, oh, I get the bonus of something special and that like I can't cook at home, but then it balances out by doing sides at home. Yeah. One more hack that I recently discovered is, you know, a lot of restaurants, they want to support the community. And so maybe they do fundraisers for community schools or uh, that, that are called like spirit nights, or maybe they do other uh, fundraisers for charity. And so when you go out and eat that night, I feel like my money's doing double duty because yes, I'm getting the meal for me or the fam, but then part of the proceeds are going to a cause that I support. And so it's kind of like, you know, you get to do two things at once. Your dollar goes a little bit further, right? You're helping yeah. out the community and you're getting a really good meal. So I, yeah. I love that. One. So definitely look out for those types of deals too. Hey, 
Hey Houston, looking for some design inspiration? Check out the 2024 AIA Houston Home Tour. On November 2nd and 3rd, you'll get a rare chance to step inside some of the city's most stunning custom homes, all crafted by some of Houston's top architects. Whether you're dreaming up your own perfect space or just love exploring amazing designs like I do, this tour is a must. Each home is a masterpiece showcasing the collaboration between homeowners, architects, and builders. And the best part? You can chat with the architects right there on site so you can get tips, ask questions, and soak up all the creative vibes. Don't miss out on this unique experience. To learn more or grab your tickets, just head over to architecturehouston.org. Again, that's architecturehouston.org. So mark your calendars November 2nd and 3rd and come join us for the AIA Houston Home Tour. You won't want to miss it. The British International School of Houston is an international and diverse private school with top academic results in a state-of-the-art campus serving children from pre-K-3 to 12th grade. The British International School of Houston offers an outstanding private education with state-of-the-art facilities on a sprawling 32-acre campus unlike anywhere else. They recruit teachers who are global talents to inspire students' confidence, resilience, and creativity with an international-minded environment. Students build pathways to the world's best universities through excellent results and internationally recognized qualifications. Are you interested in learning more about the British International School of Houston? Search BIS Houston today and get in touch with their admissions team. You can also join their upcoming open house on October 30th by registering online. That's the British International School of Houston. The Museum of Fine Arts Houston presents Living with the Gods, Arts, Beliefs, and Peoples. To celebrate its centennial, the museum has organized a once-in-a-lifetime exhibition that features extraordinary objects made by artists to communicate with their gods. Living with the Gods represents a vast array of religions and beliefs, with art created across cultures and across thousands of years. The 200 objects demonstrate the astonishing quality that artists have achieved when driven by passion and faith. Living with the Gods is on view from October 27th through January 20th, 2025. Visit mfah.org slash livingwiththegods to learn more. That's mfah.org slash livingwiththegods. So I love to shop um, and I really got more into online shopping as many people did during the pandemic. It was kind of my treat to myself, like, man, we're at home, but I know that I have an Amazon package coming. So it was kind of brightening <laughs> my spirits a little bit, but I do need help on saving money for online shopping because I do feel like that is my Achilles heel of like, oh, I'm just on Amazon looking. I can just add this to my cart. Like oh. it just feels kind of like it's not really a part of my budget, even though it really, it really needs to be. So <laughs> number one advice, delete the apps. Okay. <laughs> we just saved you a lot of money. We all do it. I think it's one of the Achilles heels for all of us in that online shopping is so easy. It's so fast, right? And you can just get whatever you want, free shipping, all that good stuff. We're going to do it. So let me jump in on this one. I use this website called Rakuten, R-A-K-U-T-E-N, where they give you cash back on purchases for most stores, right? So for example, if I know I'm going to be buying shoes on Nike for my daughter's or more than likely it's for me, <laughs> I know I'm going to start my shopping at this website called Rakuten and I'm going to get back like 6 to 10%, which can be a lot of money when you end up buying expensive shoes or you're buying shoes for the whole family. So you get back money on a quarterly basis and this works for most stores. Uh, but this website is great. They also have these referral codes that go out all the time. So if you referred Laura, Brooke, you would get $30 and she would get $30 off. All right. So like that's a special they do. So you can really save a lot of money. Like I looked at my lifetime savings before we taped this and I was at $480. So oh, I got $480 wow. back 
for stuff I was going to spend money on anyway. <laughs> so I love this website. There's a lot of other websites like it, but I've just found this one to be the easiest to use and they have the most partners that they work with. That's that's pretty impressive. But like, what's the hook? Like, I'm waiting for the hook. Like, is there like a membership fee or Nothing. they're tracking your data? Yeah. Like, what <laughs> what are they getting in return? Yeah, like I haven't found anything. Now, I don't know how they're using my information. I'll be honest with you. I have no idea, right? Like, but they are obviously tracking this because the way it works is I use my personal email for Rakuten. And then when I check out at Nike, right? I'll use that example again. I use that same email so they're tracking that. I'm sure they're selling my information. But uh, at this point, I just assume everybody is, right? Like it sucks. <laughs> like everyone is, right? Including politicians because I keep getting text messages from them. <laughs> just know your your information has been sold by everybody. So yeah, I'm not sure. But there's no membership fee. There, nothing. Okay. Like literally, I get money every quarter for the stuff that I'm buying and more importantly that my wife is buying. Okay. <laughs> so if you can't beat him, join him. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I I hear you on the on the shopping, but I'm going to throw something out there that's a little bit different on a way to save money here on the shopping and that is go thrifting. There's mm-hmm. so many mm-hmm. fantastic mm-hmm. thrift stores in Houston. You know, even the there's the Goodwills and Salvation Army, but also more boutique type consignment stores. Uh, so many in Montrose, Brooke, which I'm yes. sure you're familiar <laughs> with. But you know, you can find really good deals. Yeah. Um, you can find quality pieces that are going to last a long time. Whether it's like, you know, furniture or household goods or you know clothes. Um, and also it's more environmentally friendly. You know, there's no packaging and shipping and the stuff is already made and it's not going to a landfill and you're giving it a second life. Um, but you can get some one of a kind things at thrift stores and yeah. so many great deals. On that wavelength, I love using Facebook Marketplace. It has been so clutch for me when I'm looking for household appliances, right? Mm. For example, I needed a fertilizer spreader. So instead of going and buying a new one, I just searched that on Facebook Marketplace and found like 10 around me that were selling for like 60% off the retail price. They've obviously been used, but some items, it's okay if they're used. So I like that a lot. I think it's one of the best things they've done. I have saved so much money and resold so much stuff that, and given my stuff a second chance as well. Another one of my favorite things is buy nothing groups on social media. Yes. Where you get to just give stuff away or find free stuff kind of more neighbor to neighbor and it's all neighborhood based. I don't know. How does how does that all sound, Brooke? It sounds like work, but but (laughs) it does sound like I know it does sound like time. But, you know, I do love going in person to shop. So (laughs) I definitely will check out more of the thrift stores in Montrose and even the the app that Raheel was talking about where he has saved four hundred and eighty dollars like that. That is appealing. So I'm going to check some of these things out. Put in time. okay? It takes time to make money. It takes time to save money. So know that with a lot of this advice. Okay, one that y'all have to help me out with, electric, right? I can't save on electric for the life of me. I have tried shopping around. I have done so much. And yes, I will find a good rate. But at the end of the day, this is one of the hardest ones because we will be hit with that energy pass-through fee. So there's always going to be like this big bump when it comes to electric. Any advice here? So for me, this has been a huge pain point. Probably one of the biggest annoyances is the electricity bill because I live on the top floor. I have tons of windows and you know, we've had some brutal summers with heat and definitely during summer 2023, that was my most expensive electric bill summer. And I was like, either I'm going to have to move or I'm going to have to find a better um, electric company. But one way that I have saved this year has been switching over to average billing. So if you have that option with your electric company, you should check it out because it really has cut 
my electricity bill in half for some of the ones that were more expensive. I mean, I'm talking, I was looking at a bill that was close to $300. And as you guys know, I live in a one bedroom apartment. So that was pretty insane. But With average billing, I mean, now I'm likely paying between 100 to 150 every month. So it really has saved me a lot. And I didn't even realize it was going to save me that much. So wait, what is average billing? Can you explain it? So average billing divides your annual cost by 12. So based on your last 12 months of usage, and if you don't have 12 months of usage data, they'll use your historical usage data for your address. So for your neighborhood. And that's what they did for me, which is why my bills have run between 100 to 150 every month. I hadn't heard that about average billing, Brooke. But one thing that has helped us as a family is using this service called Energy Ogre. Um, so they bas- you basically pay them $10 a month, and then they do all the research for you. So they're constantly scanning the market to see are you getting the best deal? Is there a better deal out there? Um, I don't know if it has technically saved us money. I think it has, but more than money, it has saved us time. It's also super helpful when you move um, because moving is really special. You can break a contract with your energy provider without paying a penalty. And so Energy Ogre helped us find a new provider, set up that contract, and then our old provider started double charging us. And Energy Ogre actually came in and advocated uh, for us to try and get some money back. So I don't want this to sound like a commercial for one uh, service. I think there's others out there, but I just wanted to share our experience that getting some help on the research side when you have this really hard to understand market goes a long way. Hidden fees are something to watch out for, right? So if you're not going to use Energy Ogre, look for hidden fees. Try to find a smaller retail provider. You look at the big ones, right? Like Reliant and you see their name over stadiums or sponsoring a lot of things. Those are things that are being passed down to you as well, right? So look for smaller providers, do your research. I've used Energy Ogre as well. And once they found a deal for me, I'm so cheap, I canceled the service. So (laughs) there is that. I'm sorry. That's just what I do. (laughs) But yeah, this is so much great advice. I want to end it with a wild card. Do we have any wild card savings tips out there? So my wild card is like zooming out just a little bit. Um, Using some apps for tracking all of this stuff. So, like a budget app for yourself or your family, you know, there's a lot out there. Um, That has helped us just kind of stay on top of where everything is going and, you know, where are the pain points and where could we maybe research more? You know, are we on target? Is the grocery bill going up? So, just having um, some extra tools for that budget side. has really helped us out. Okay, I'm definitely gonna take you up on that advice, Laura, because I am horrible at budgeting. Like I love saving money, but I never look at my snapshot. And my brother has been pushing me to do this. He is a financial wizard. Like he loves money and numbers. (laughs) And he's always like, why are you not tracking? Like how much are you spending a a month on this and that? And I need to get better at that. So I definitely will take that piece of advice. My last one here, we know the saying that it takes a village to raise a child, right? Here's my new saying, it takes a village to save. And here's what I mean by it. Share subscriptions, all right? Share (laughs) subscriptions. So if you have Apple Music, for example, buy a family plan and share it with a friend or family member and you split that cost. YouTube TV, so cable, I share it with my brother. There's a lot of different services that still allow you to have family members on a plan. Mm -hmm. So be smart with that. Get other people involved because you can split those savings up and do it legally. You're not password sharing. You're allowed (laughs) to have a household Mm -hmm. on these accounts. Yeah, we're not not talking about like pirate (laughs) pirate subscriptions. No, no. (laughs) (laughs) No, just, yeah, share the subscriptions. No, I definitely do that and it has saved me a lot. And I think it's also looking at how many subscriptions you have Sometimes Mm -hmm. you don't even know you're subscribed. Like, go look at your bank statement, see what's coming out every single month. If you haven't watched Hulu in like 12 months, then I would I would stop paying for it. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, that's that's good advice right there. One last wild card: um, negotiate. 
and that really goes across so many different things. Like, don't be afraid to ask for um, a discount or a better rate, um, especially when it's kind of one to one with a, a landlord or a small business. Um, you never know. It, the worst thing they can say is no, um, but definitely all that advocacy and research goes a long way. You definitely don't want to be with me in public, Laura, because I do that and my <laughs> wife gets so embarrassed because I will ask everybody like, hey, do you have a coupon? Hey, what deals do you have? Hey, can I save on this? What if I buy a little bit more? So I'm with you on that one. Negotiate and ask because what's the worst thing they're going to say? No. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm expecting at our next team outing for Raheel to get us a deal wherever we're at. Lunch, I got y'all. dinner. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm expecting it. <laughs> I got y'all. Okay, that was a lot of fun. And hopefully these tips help y'all to keep Houston affordable. And please share your tips with us as well on Instagram at CityCastHouston. Laura, Brooke, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, y'all. That was Hey Houston newsletter writer Brooke Lewis and executive producer Laura Isensee. Help your friends save some money by sharing this episode with three friends and also on your favorite social media feed. You can also check out the link in our show notes to subscribe to our daily newsletter Hey Houston, where Brooke Lewis is constantly dropping free events to check out. Thanks. That will do it for today. I'm Raheel Ramzanali. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned something new. Right, let's do this. Let me pull this up. Oh, and now he is blowing the grass. I don't know if y'all can hear that. I do. <laughs> Give me one second. He's literally like walking the other way. All right.